Hey guys, how's it going? I just came back from a trip to Masbate and Subic here in the Philippines and it was ridiculously beautiful there. Actually, I even came to realize that though I have already traveled to about 30 countries around the world, I haven't really fully explored my own home country yet. In fact, out of all the 81 provinces that we have, I think I've only been to about 13 of them. So yeah, I do aim to start correcting that. Now, if you're new to my channel, hi, I'm Eileen Dalit. I'm a travel blogger, vlogger, and online entrepreneur. If you wanna learn more about my story, who I am, and how I basically started this whole sustainable travel lifestyle, you can click on the link that will pop up above me right now. But if that doesn't work, I will also put a link in the description below. Now, I have been traveling the world for over four years now, and I ain't gonna stop anytime soon or ever. And I've been sharing all of my adventures and shenanigans on my two and a half year old travel blog as well as this one year old YouTube channel. YouTube is actually a new platform for me, obviously, but it has hit off really well and I have you guys, all the new subscribers alike, to thank for that. Speaking of which, when it comes to my video production, a lot of you guys have been constantly asking me about the camera gear that I use. Well, I typically use several cameras for my videos and they are things that I have come to trust and like, but I'm always constantly searching for ways to improve my craft. For instance, in the past months, there has been a lot of noise about cameras, stabilizers, or gimbals, particularly that of the DJI Osmo product line. What are gimbals, you might ask? Basically, they are contraptions that help lessen vibrations or shaking, especially when you move or do handheld shooting. Through that way, you can record silky smooth videos that look absolutely cinematic and professional. The cameras that are used now actually have their own stabilization features. After all, I prefer fluid videos because I really don't like watching shaky footage. However, more often than not, my current gear is not enough. That's why gimbals really got me curious. And the Siphon Q, DJI contacted me a few weeks ago asking if I wanted to try some of their gimbals. Of course, I said yes in a heartbeat. That's why today I will be showing you my two new toys, the DJI Osmo Mobile and the Osmo Plus. These are two famous devices that are essentially different from one another. And depending on your experience, budget, as well as the type of videos that you want to make, one of these two will be best suited as your newest gear. To help you make a decision on that, I will be reviewing and comparing the both of them today. First off, the DJI Osmo Mobile which controls your smartphone, turning it into a smart motion camera. We all know anyways how hard it is to keep a smartphone still whenever we're recording a video, and this Osmo Mobile helps solve that problem. In its box, you will find that it contains a battery, a power cable, a carrying pouch, a strap, a reset protection cap, and of course, the mobile phone gimbal itself. I really love the build of this gimbal and its smooth rubber grip. It's also not that bulky nor heavy to hold, which makes it perfect for on-the-go individuals like me. Now this part right here holds your smartphone, and it can hold and support most of the smartphones available today. I have an iPhone 5S and an iPhone 7, and the Osmo Mobile could hold both of them just fine. It helps to note that the Osmo Mobile has a dial to control the width of the clamp that will gently grip and secure your phone. This is so unlike your typical selfie sticks that have those strong spring clamps that can possibly scratch or damage your phone. By the way, if you have an Android smartphone, you can definitely use it as well with the Osmo Mobile. But it helps to note that there can be some camera or recording features that won't work with your phone system. Now let's power up this thing. To start recording, you should have installed the DJI GO application on your phone and connected it with your Osmo Mobile. I already have this application installed because I've been using it for my drone, which is the DJI Mavic Pro. And as you will see later on, this app is a wonder given all of its intelligent features and tricks, which help set it apart from its competition. Before we get into that though, let me just show you the basics. This joystick right here will smoothly pan your mobile from the left to the right. And then up and down. If you add more movement, you will get even more interesting pans. For the buttons on the right, this is the record button and the bigger one is the shutter button. If I turn the gimbal around, you will find this thing that looks like a switch and it's called the trigger. If I hold it down, the camera will lock down and stay in its current position no matter how I move it around. If I hold it down and push the joystick up and down, the camera will zoom in and out. 
If I tap the trigger twice, it will center my phone. If I tap it twice, it will switch between my phone's front camera and rear camera. For positioning, I can hold the Osmo Mobile down, rotate it to the left, or to the right at 90 degrees, and even push it forward. Moving on, let's finally explore its cool tricks. The feature that I really love about the Osmo Mobile is its Active Track technology. In this corner, you will see this icon that can change from metering mode to active track mode. You just need to tap it to switch between the two. The icon for active track is the one in a square. To use it, you just need to mark an object that you want to track by dragging a box over it. Once you've done that, the Osmo Mobile will keep it in its sight, no matter how much you move the gimbal or the object itself. Another cool feature aside from the time lapse would be the motion time lapse. To use this, first, you need to move your gimbal in the first position that you want it to start your time lapse on. Once you've decided on that, press the plus button. Second, move the gimbal to the next area that you want it to look at. Click the plus sign again. You can keep doing this until you're satisfied. Once you're done, click next. A window will then display the time-lapse settings that you can modify. At the bottom, it will show the length of the video that it will generate. If you want to do slow motion recordings, the Osmo Mobile can do it as well. The same applies for panoramas and live video streaming. A very helpful feature if you're a vlogger that frequently goes live on YouTube and Facebook. Overall, as you can see, the Osmo Mobile is an amazing gear that can easily transform your smartphone into a powerful camera. And clearly, having it will greatly improve the quality of videos that you'll be making with your smartphone. So now, let's explore the features of the Osmo Plus. Unlike the Osmo Mobile, the Osmo Plus has its own camera, which is quite a powerhouse. In fact, this is more of a professional gimbal compared to the Osmo Mobile. In its box, you will find a hard case storage bag with a shoulder strap, a power cable, a battery in its battery charger, a strap, a rosette protection cap, the gimbal with a 16GB SD card inside its built-in camera and its mobile device holder, some manuals, and an extra flexi microphone. To better explore the unique features of the Osmo Plus, I think it will be better for me to start comparing it now with the Osmo Mobile. First thing off, much like the Osmo Mobile, the Osmo Plus has the same button functions, movement, and positioning. It also has the same DJI Go app features such as standard time-lapse, motion time-lapse, slow motion recording, panorama, 4K quality recording, and live stream. Furthermore, in my opinion, both are future-proof because the Osmo Mobile can be paired with newer phones with better camera specs. But of course, provided that it's still within the dimensions that the mobile grip can hold. And then, given that the Osmo Plus has a detachable gimbal, you can technically update or upgrade its camera specs and features as well. And that's it! This is where their similarities stop. Now we start to discuss where the Osmo Mobile and Osmo Plus differ. Number 1. Active Track If you're fond of the Active Track technology, the Osmo Plus doesn't have this function. It's only the Osmo Mobile that has this trick given how it is already built into your mobile. Number 2. Photo and video quality Obviously, the quality of your photos and videos depend entirely on the phone that you'll be pairing together with the Osmo Mobile. One issue I've found though is that when you use phones such as that of the iPhone 6s Plus and iPhone 7 series that have optical image stabilization, there can be some slight jittering whenever you record videos and do pans. This is because your phone's stabilization is battling with that of the Osmo Mobile. As for the Osmo Plus, it relies on its built-in camera. You can also have the ability to do 7x zoom without sacrificing HD quality. Number 3. Stabilization The both of their gimbals can stabilize your videos just fine. But as you will notice, whenever I start walking, that bobbing effect from my strides is still noticeable in the footage. It's not as harsh of course compared to footage taken without a gimbal, but of course it's there. If you want to eliminate this completely, you would need to use DJI's Z-axis stabilizer, which eliminates vertical movements from natural walking. Unfortunately, this accessory is not compatible with an Osmo Mobile.
Number 4. Mounts and Accessories You can use a tripod and an extension rod for both the Osmo Mobile and Osmo Plus. But like I said, you just can't use the C-axis on the Osmo Mobile. To add to this, when you want to get low or high shots with your Osmo Mobile together with an extension rod, it helps to note that your mobile is both your camera and screen. And since it will be attached to the tip of the rod, it can be tough to see what you're recording. With the Osmo Plus, you won't have this problem because you can detach the mobile holder and attach it somewhere nearer to the grip of the rod. Number 5. Audio The iPhone sound is okay, but if you want better sounds, you would often need an external microphone. And regrettably, the Osmo Mobile does not have an input for that. You would need to attach it directly to your phone, which might affect the gimbal's overall balance. So you're pretty much stuck with what your phone can offer. On the other hand, the Osmo Plus has an external microphone input and it even comes with a free microphone for you to use. Lastly, number 6. Price The Osmo Mobile is priced at around $300 and the Osmo Plus is at around $650. So which is more worth it? Well, it's all up to you. Anyhow, it's clear to see that the Osmo Mobile is geared towards consumers or amateur vloggers that simply want an affordable device that can level up the capabilities of their smartphones, which can already take decent photos and videos. Meanwhile, the Osmo Plus is an investment that can fit both the amateur and professional consumers who are looking for more power, capability, and quality in the photos and videos that they want to make. All in all, given the information that I've provided you, I bet that you have already come to a decision by now on the Osmo device that you would want to have the most. I really hope that you guys found this video helpful and do let me know which of the two you will be picking by posting a comment below. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you watch out for my future clips as I make full use of these gimbals. Bye!